I believe nothing is for chance in life. I believe that it was one of my purposes in life to find something and bring it to market. I believe that in my life I was led to this. And it was a dream of mine. myself in Southeast Asia um, in about the mid-90s and I came across this botanical mangosteen. They were telling me, this is the queen of fruit. I asked, why is it the queen of fruit? Oh, it's because Queen Victoria says it's the best tasting fruit in all the world. And so that, as I studied a little bit more, I found that the local folklore was not about the fruit itself, but it was about the peel. That the people of Southeast Asia, of India, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam would use this rind, use this, uh, the peel of this fruit, they boil it and make a tea out of it and they drink it for stomach problems, they drink it for dysentery, they drink it for diarrhea, they drink it um, to help uh, bring down the fever with malaria. They'd make a poultice out of it and they'd put it on their skin for skin conditions and I found that very intriguing I thought, oh wow. It's got folklore, it's got a story behind it. I got very excited about this. So I phoned my brother Gord, and I phoned Aaron, and I said, guys, I think we got something here. I think we have something special. My mom had a health food store, you know, of course. My father had a health and nutrition business, and he was saying, oh, there's this fruit, the mango steam. And I remember him saying, did mom ever talk about this? Did dad ever talk about this? And, and I was like, mango steam, I don't. No, I'd never heard of it. And he said, well, it's kind of the rage amongst traditional healers over here. Joe knew virtually everything there was to know about available supplements that were on the market, what they contained, what they did, and how they were to be used. And I remember for the first time getting a call from Joe saying, have you ever heard about the mangosteen? And uh, I, I reflected and, and I said, absolutely not. What is it? Just this little fruit, about the size of a tangerine. It's dark purple in color. It has a very large leaf to it. And inside there's a, a very white fruit. And I remember him saying, you know, this tastes really good. Compared to a lot of supplements we've been brought up with that taste really bad. Immediately we thought, well, there can't be much efficacy in it because of the fact that it tastes good. As it turns out, the rind encasing this fruit happens to be one of the most nutrient-dense uh, substances on the earth. He described it and talked about the folklore uses and, and some of the, the questions he had posed to some of the uh, native people of Southeast Asia and gave Joe actually an idea of what the mangosteen had been used for. We took our research and we actually presented it to Dr. David Morton. I was introduced to the mangosteen fruit through my older brother Joseph. Well, I told Joseph, if there isn't any science behind this fruit, I will tell you, and it's something I won't get involved in. You won't need a scientist if there's no science behind it. So he started to do some scans that he has access to, uh, university scans around the world. And we actually asked him to do uh, Medline searches on these databases to see if there was any research whatsoever on the mangosteen itself. I started doing some searches on, on PubMed and got a couple of papers on the mangosteen fruit. The scientific name is Garcinia mangostana. 
The first one that I received was on anti-inflammatory properties. It was in 1979 from University of Madras in India. And, and anti-inflammatories are a big aspect of people's health, even though most people don't even realize it. But nowadays, people have a headache, they take an aspirin, which is an anti-inflammatory. They have joint pains, so they take an aspirin, which is an anti-inflammatory. And there's numerous side effects behind these. So this aspect of being an anti-inflammatory is a big part of the health industry. So I kept looking up and found another paper on anti-inflammatory from 1980, as well from the University of Madras in India. And then the big one that came was from Sendai, Japan, where there's a laboratory there that did research on how the mangosteen fruit stops the body from having an inflammatory reaction. And that was a big paper to show what uh, is a buzzword in, in the health industry is a COX inhibitor. It stops an enzyme in the body that makes your body have pain and swell and so forth. And he came back a couple weeks later with about a foot and a half of research. We were stunned. He went and did a Medline search and he came back with scads of documents about the scientific validity of, as to why these things work. In the health industry, exaggerations can come. And Joseph and Gordon talk about a foot and a half of paper research, and that is not an exaggeration. There really is a foot and a half of research. As a matter of fact, one of the researchers uh, went so far as to state uh, that he found it very hard to, to believe that no one had actually introduced the mangosteen commercially to the market with all of the research that had been done on it. That's why when we originally talked to Dr. Templeman, he said, I don't want to look at this unless it's had science behind it, some peer-reviewed science. I was approached by someone on staff at the University of Utah Medical School, uh, who I respected, and he asked me to take a look at some papers. Now, all of these papers had been in scientific journals, and what struck me was the wide variety of applications, what we would call in, in medicine, indications for usage extremely broad you know it's one thing to say you take this and it does this for you we don't know why but it's another thing when they've been able to say the rind of the pericarp from the mangosteen contains xanthones xanthones are a chemical compound that is found within the pericarp and in the so a small part the pulp or the actual tasty part of the mangosteen fruit it's not familiar to most people because it's a chemical class that's not found in most of the fruits and vegetables and plants that are in this side of the world in the United States. Xanthones as a class of substances are found mostly in lower plants, things like lichens and, and pieces of wood. You're not going to want to eat that. But the only fruit really that exists that contains xanthones is the mangosteen and it contains 40 approximately of the slightly over 200 that exist in nature. The thing about science is it helps, it does not give all of the answers, but it helps give an idea that there is something to this fruit. Groups of scientists that have done the studies have had their peers review it, and the peers come back and say, you know what, that's legit. That's legit science. The science that's required to allow a person to make a choice about what food they're going to eat is a whole lot less detailed, uh, than if you were talking about what medicine they were going to use. With supplements and food, it's an entirely different question. I mean, people could eat whatever food they wish. This is not a medicine. This is a food. And that was the first thing that attracted me, because most things in the supplemental market uh, have little or no science behind it. And, you know, I'm a doctor, not all doctors are scientists, and I don't necessarily consider myself a scientist, but I want to know that science is there.